Hello. Welcome back to the Tech Theater Skills Series. My name is Chris Schlemp and I've been an actor, director, projections designer, and teacher for over 20 years. I'm glad to be sharing some of my knowledge with you. This series is all about sound design and is intended for someone who is just beginning their voyage of discovery into the world of sound in the theater. The sound design series will be broken up into seven parts, and this is episode six, Microphones and Belt Packs, where we will be discussing some of the basics of lavalier microphone placement for actors who will be mic'd during a performance. Time to get out a pen and notebook. Watching and listening are great ways to encounter a new topic, but you really make it your own by engaging with the material, writing down what you hear, and trying things out for yourself. The more you can connect your eyes, ears, hand, and brain, the more likely you are to learn. Actors are specially trained to project their voices so they can be heard clearly even in large theater spaces. However, even a well-trained actor has a hard time projecting over the powerful instruments of a full orchestra during a musical. For this reason, it sometimes becomes necessary to have actors wear microphones that use a Wi-Fi signal to transmit their voice to the soundboard. In larger theater companies, a sound designer will not usually be responsible for placing microphones and securing belt packs. That job usually belongs to an assistant sound engineer or some other similar position. However, as a company size shrinks, what typically happens is that more responsibilities fall onto the shoulders of a single person. It's not unusual at all for a production to have a sound designer, sound mixer, sound programmer, and sound engineer all be one human being. For this reason, it is important for all technical theater students to have at least some working knowledge of how to place and secure microphones. And actors need to have these skills as well, so that they can have patience and empathy for their sound techs, and can even make adjustments themselves in an emergency. The importance of trust between a sound technician and an actor cannot be overstated. An actor needs to be able to trust that their sound tech will do everything possible to make the actor sound good and keep their mic secure, so that the actor can focus solely on their performance. It is also critical that a sound tech does not hurt an actor or make them feel uncomfortable when putting a mic in place. Communication is key here. An actor should always feel free to say when they are uncomfortable, and a sound tech should always be clear about what they are doing at each step before they do it. For their part, the actor needs to follow the protocol for when to apply makeup, how to handle the equipment, and where to return it at the end of each performance. Typically, a sound technician will get the microphone rigs ready right before tech week, the final week before a show opens where all the technical elements get put in place begins. The first decision to make is whether or not the actor will be in a head rig or an ear rig. As a general rule, the head rig is preferred because it simply sounds better. If you are a singer at all, then you know how important the forehead and nasal cavities are to your sound, so having a microphone closer to those areas simply works better. The microphone itself gets placed at the hairline and gets aimed down to align with the forehead. Toupee clips, small clips that hold wigs and toupees in place with small elastic cord, can then attach the microphone wire to the actor's hair or to the wig they will be wearing. This is basically how a hair rig works. If for some reason, such as the fact that the actor is wearing a hat or has some other complicated hair piece that gets in the way, then the other common way to attach a microphone is with an ear rig. The sound technician takes a small length of flexible wire and molds it into this shape to exactly fit the actor's ear. The microphone wire then gets attached to this molded wire with special tubing or special tape. This is basically how an ear rig works. In both a head rig and an ear rig, the microphone wire goes around to the back of the neck and then down the actor's back to arrive at a small device known as a wireless transmitter. This device wirelessly transmits the signal to a receiver near the soundboard, where the board operator can make individual adjustments to the sound during a performance. The microphone wire gets attached to the actor in various spots with special medical tape that looks like this. This is the same kind of tape that patients in a hospital might have to keep an IV tube attached to their arm. 
The tape is very sticky and resists falling off due to sweat or activity, which makes it perfect for active actors who often sweat a lot under bright, hot stage lights. A popular choice of tape is Transpore by 3M, but there are other brands that also work well. Some actors also may need a different brand if they have an allergic reaction to certain kinds. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, or if you happen to be in my class, add them in the chat. Let's see if we can figure out the answers together. Preparing the skin by cleaning it is an important first step, because the tape sticks better to clean skin. Because mic tape does not stick well to stage makeup, the actor has to arrive to have their mics put on before they put on makeup, but after they have cleaned their skin. The sound tech will then put on whichever type of rig has been designed for the actor and tape the wires securely in place. After a quick mic check to make sure that everything is working properly, the actor then goes to put on their makeup, which can also disguise whichever pieces of tape are still visible. If they do a good job, the microphone will be nearly invisible from the audience. The transmitter itself is generally worn in a belt pack, either around the waist or around the thigh or around the chest, like in a concealed gun holster. They can be made of cloth with a flap held in place by Velcro or a button. A better choice is a belt pack made of neoprene, the same material that a wetsuit is made of because it holds the transmitter more securely and provides a barrier against an actor's sweat. Some actors prefer one location for the belt pack over another, but sometimes the costume forces the choice. Typically, actors keep their belt pack with their costume in the dressing room and return the microphone and transmitter to the sound technician after each performance so they can clean or repair them as needed and recharge or replace the batteries. Okay. Time for you to try it out. Try to find a small length of wire that is easy to bend, but sturdy enough to hold its shape after you bend it. If you have access to a pipe cleaner or a wire coat hanger, that would be perfect. See if you can recreate this shape into an ear rig that fits over your ear. Cover the cut ends of the wire with tape first so you don't poke or scrape yourself. Now, you can attach a piece of yarn or string to your ear rig to help you simulate how the microphone wire would wrap around the back of your neck, down your back, and to a belt pack around your waist. You learned a lot today. You learned about the importance of a good relationship between a sound technician and an actor. You learned two different ways to attach a microphone to an actor, and you learned how to secure a transmitter to an actor using a belt pack. I want to thank you for stopping by today to learn some more about sound design. If you enjoyed learning, please feel free to like and subscribe. In the next episode, we will discuss the basics of programming and mixing, which will be the final episode in this series. I look forward to continuing this journey with you next time. <laughs>